NFL Draft is here finally, and we're looking at some realistic outcomes for the New England Patriots when it comes to building that offense. Talking about weapons here, ranking top three wide receivers that the Patriots could realistically end up with in this year's draft, whether they're trading up for them or staying put. I don't know if it's worth trading up for them. Evan, what are your thoughts on this? There's a lot of great wide receivers in this draft. I mean, we're going to talk about guys, I think, over the next couple of days, maybe 15 wide receivers taken in the first three rounds of the draft over this weekend. We're going to see a ton of wide receivers off the board. I studied over 30 of them because that's going to be, I think, the number that we're going to get towards by the end of day three. Now, the question for the Patriots really is, is where do they prioritize wide receiver in their needs hierarchy? Because I think a lot of people in the media and on the outside looking in, look at the Patriots wide receiver room and they see Nelson Aguilar at the top of that depth chart and they're like, they could probably do better than that. The issue is though, to me in this conversation is that you got to factor in the two tight ends, right? You have Hunter Henry and Johnny Smith now. And I think here locally in New England, we understand that you could run an offense through tight ends. Whereas maybe on the outside, everyone's, enamored by speed, enamored by outside receiver talent. You know, where is where are those big plays coming from? Maybe they want that wide receiver. But I, I still think the Patriots look at wide receiver as a need that they'll address on day two or day three. Now, with that being said, my number one guy off the top of the draft is Devontae Smith from Alabama. If Devontae Smith is there for New England and they stay pat at 15, it's going to be really difficult to pass up on the Heisman Trophy winner. This is somebody that runs routes with a PhD in route running and really has great skills after the catch. So those are two things that you talk about with New England. Play speed, route running ability, yards after catch ability. That's what the Patriots look for in wideouts, right? That's what great wideouts here in New England tend to have in their tool bag. You know, there's not a whole lot of guys that are big, fast, size, speed, explosive prospects that work out here with the Patriots. Nikhil Harry, Chad Jackson, Aaron Dobson. We can go down the list. But if you start to get into those cerebral players that just know how to play football, those guys tend to really work out in in New England. I think Devontae Smith is that type of guy. The other guy from Alabama, obviously, is Jalen Waddell. He is a game breaker right? And if you get Jalen Waddell in your offense, it changes the complexion of how every defensive coordinator prepares for you every single Sunday because you need to worry about that speed. And it's a three-level version of speed where he can run routes behind the line of scrimmage and catch passes behind the line of scrimmage and create with the ball in his hands. Then he can cross over the middle of the field and run horizontal routes to stretch the field horizontally. And then he can run vertical routes to stretch the field up the field. So this is a guy that every single D coordinator is going to have to think, okay, we're going to have to roll the safety over the top or we might even have to double this guy sometimes if Jalen Waddell ends up really being a factor at the NFL level like we all think he's going to so both Alabama guys if they're there at 15 it's really difficult not to pull the trigger there if you're the Patriots now the third guy that I do want to mention who we haven't really talked a ton about is Rashad Bateman from Minnesota and he reminds me a lot of Justin Jefferson last year who not the fastest out of these this group but certainly somebody that can still very much run extremely explosive and is like sneaky fast right people kind of question his athleticism a little bit but I don't see that on tape I see a guy that can run just fine and he is another one that has that PhD in route running right somebody that can really understand how to attack coverage how to get open against man and zone press releases moves at the top of the route everything that you would want in a wide receiver prospect Rashad Bateman does a lot of things well and I think that if we revisit this draft in two to three years and you were to tell me right now Mariah that Rashad Bateman will end up being the best out of this class, I wouldn't be surprised, right? And that's the sort of draft that we're looking at at wide receiver where the fourth or the fifth guy off the board might end up being the best guy at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, we saw that this past season with Justin Jefferson. He was right. at 22, I believe it was. One pick ahead of the Patriots. They, I, I still to this day feel like if he was there at 23 when the Patriots had their original pick, I still think that Justin Jefferson would be a Patriot. They missed out on him by one spot. Yeah, absolutely. I watched Rashad Bateman in person when I used to live in Minnesota. It was magical. People showed up on Saturdays to watch him play. Um, So that would certainly be exciting. That's something I can absolutely get behind. But uh, we'll see what happens. I I guess my biggest 
thing is, is it, is it worth moving around to try and get these guys or is it such a heavy wide receiver pool that you kind of don't have to do anything, kind of just like let them come to you, see who's still available and take your pick? I, I feel like that's the best approach for it because we talk about guys like Bateman, we talk about guys like Devontae Smith. Okay, there are certainly great prospects, but is Devontae Smith that much better than somebody like a, a – Amon Ross St. Brown from USC or Amari Rogers from Clemson or one of these other guys that you could have on day two, right? Is, is he's worlds better than that type of player? Where do you rank him in your tiers? And I think that's where the Patriots are going to have conversations of, okay, we have Devonte Smith as a tier one wide receiver, but we feel like this guy in our tier two is not that far off from being a tier one guy. So maybe we wait. And, and I feel like that's where you're going to end up with wide receiver is that it's going to make more sense value wise and just stacking up needs and where the Patriots are going to be with each position to go for that day two or early day three prospect instead of somebody in round one. All right. Well, there's Evan's rankings. We'll see what actually ends up happening. Hopefully we get one of them. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, for <laughs> Everything at this point, I'm just like, we will see what happens. It's so close yet so far. Here we go. Fingers crossed that something works out for once. Um, I know. I know. It does feel like this offseason, though, it, it, Bill Belichick's been a tad more predictable this offseason, right? We talked about the spending spree before the spending spree. I, I said that the Patriots are going to spend money. And he went out and he spent money. Did we get all the players that they were going to target right? Not necessarily. But I feel like he's become a tad more predictable in this post-Brady era here. Yeah, I think his, his hand was forced a bit. And I think it was for the better. But uh, only time will tell. So for all of our Patriots coverage and all of our draft coverage, head to clnsmedia.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel over at Patriots Press Pass.